Welcome back to GameStar TV, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be bringing you the third and final game in the upper in in the upper bracket BO3 between Darksided and NMD. We've got a bit of a switcheroo going on for you. Darksided now on the red side, going up against NMD, who are on blue. And to take you through this third game will be Vandy and Geo Phoenix once again. Take it away, Phoenix. Alrighty, thank you, Crisis. As we are going to be getting into this draft very soon, it is going to be on Sky Temple. So we didn't get to see the Tomb of the Spider Queen game one. We saw Towers of Doom just then, and NMD really putting on a show there. And now game three, we got Sky Temple. It's really looking like it's going to be a real exciting finish to this series, Fandy. It will be. I'm not sure which map this one favors. Uh, I mean, okay, Infernal Shrines was banned out. We didn't get to hear the rest of them because apparently the teams forgot. <laughs> I, like, I'm, I'm going so to assume long, that it was probably like a Warhead Junction ban. I was usually. thinking it might be yeah. Yeah, one of the Star <laughs> of those maps. Two, yeah. yeah, so interestingly enough, to get Game 3 on Sky Temple, I mean, Darkseid had shown they are just as uh, at home on this map as a part of the others. I don't think map really phases them. Really, I just know their preferred map is Tomb of the Spider Queen. That is their go-to. If we want to win, let's pick this one. Otherwise, they're quite happy on the other maps. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're just a very solid team and they have a lot of uh, tools to work with in the draft and we, they did choose the first pick, so we'll be seeing their first bandit. It's going to be the Genji uh, taken off the board. They don't want to be picking that one up with their first pick and now we just have to see where NMD go with their first ban. Let's see. NMD. Jaina. I, the, I mean, hmm? the Chromie is something that you'd say, oh, it's just a good dark side band, but for this map, I no. think is just not really yeah. as an issue as it is on other maps. The Mouth AL is going to be banned away. We saw, uh, saw it played in the previous map uh, and doing a lot of work. I mean, yeah, he was dying a little bit in, early on in those fights, but was taking a lot of aggro uh, from the Dark Side lineup. Yeah, really soaking up a lot of the, I guess, the a lot of the abilities, the damage, what have you, just running your Dark Side around. And um, although Chromie... She can still work on this map, like you said, because this is a more open map where there's still a lot less chokes, might not be optimal. I mean, then you can opt into picking something like Tracer and just really blowing her up, giving her a hard time if they do decide to pick her up. Yeah, and now it's actually going to be the Arthur has the first pick. There's... We've seen it pop up here and there, uh, but haven't really seen it this highly prioritized in quite a while now. Uh, I think that would be Sasha. As I said, this is another one of his preferred go-to warriors and doesn't give anything away about their draft, how they're looking to play it out. This time, they're happy to actually, if NMD would like, they could pick up Uther. And that has been one of the key things that Darkseid would really love to pick up. Moops loves that hero. Yeah, he has shown a very strong proficiency on that hero. And just looking back at that Arthur's first pick, I mean, do you think they could even just uh, dissuade something like a Greymane or a Vala, just any of those very auto attack heavy uh, compositions, or even the Illidan, uh, do you think that this Arthas is trying to just dissuade NMD from going in those directions? I think the Arthas is both, yes, dissuading from that Illidan, which we know can be easily picked up on a map like this. We saw it earlier in the day with actually great results uh, on the side of Touch Me. But I think it's also by starting off with that warrior or support, you really don't give anything away from your draft. And then uh, Dark Side this time, I think they're looking to counter pick this time around. All righty. So we do have Anubarak and the Falstad picked up for NMD. We've, we saw uh, Dark Side had picked up the Falstad in the previous game. It was still doing a fair amount of work, but just wasn't enough in the end, and the Nubarak is, well, still one of those highly prioritized heroes, and now we just have to wait and see what dark, how, how Darkseid want to go with their draft. Instead, they pick up the Illidan oh, for themselves, so wow. no counter. That's smart. So if you don't pick the, up the Illidan, we have his main counter at the moment, so we can pick him up for ourselves, as well as the Abatha. So having two Illidans, potentially, that's disgusting. Already, this is a disgusting draft from uh, Dark Side, and now it's just going to get uh, it's going to get worse before it gets better for the side of NMD. We'll just have to wait and see how it uh, progresses. We are into the second round of bands, and well, what do you end up going for? I mean, the Uther is still on the table, but they could pick it up themselves. Uh, one of the other supports uh, are probably not as high priori prioritized. You're probably something like a, uh, a Rhaegar or Maybe just taking away some more of the range damage, like a Leeming or a Greymane. Yeah, taking away. Interesting. I would have thought that... Well, I would have thought that NMD would want to take Uther for themselves. 
Yeah, it seems that they don't want Moops to have it, and they just aren't really looking to pick it up themselves, so they just ban it away. I mean, if you're not going to pick it, and you know that your opponents are very proficient on it, why not use that ban? Well, you could not let Illidan have both Abatha oh, and that be, Uther. Yeah. That would be ridiculous. But that does leave Tacita on if they would like to do, I guess, a dual support and then just put all their eggs in that Illidan basket. Oh, that would be incredibly all in on, on that Illidan. It, it would essentially mean that they would have little to no range damage, essentially having the Tacita as your range damage. And I'm not too sure how that would work out. But... No. There I are, mean, it wouldn't be the best. Yeah. I think they should still diversify, get a mage going. I mean, we've seen Kel'thas, Ming, they're still available. Yeah, there Let's are see. still quite a few tools available, as it looks like the Stukov is going to end up being this ban from Dark Sided. So another one of those highly prioritized uh, supports. And uh, very much looking forward to seeing how he kind of, how Stukov just himself ends up developing in the meta. Stukov's a very interesting one. I mean, I like that ban on the side of dark sided almost just when you're going to those yes is i guess not so many choice but when you're fighting around the temple and Stukov then just lays out that silence can be quite devastating to a team to just like run into the lurking arm oh yeah and especially when you have something like an illidan who is quite dependent on a lot of his abilities just completely denying that with the silence can really make him uh, have a real rough day Mm, okay, no surprises. I was going to say, if you're not picking Uther, next best bet would be something like Malfurion, because as adding on to what you said, Silence can work very effectively against Illidan as well in helping to lock him down. And that Zul, I like that. That will help them really deal with a lot of the split push that Illidan will be bringing by having a lot, a nice strong pusher of their own. Well, well saying uh, by going for the double support uh, to go with the Illidan was going a little bit too all in on it but they're going all in on it regardless they got another frontline with the ETC and also picking up the Rhaegar so this is an incredibly melee heavy lineup from Darksider but I guess on a map like Sky Temple it, you can kind of make it work yeah we saw one of the teams as well I believe it was Team DC and they were running something similar as in, it just looked very sustained, heavy team. I mean, and they were doing quite decently with it. A couple of teams didn't go in their favor, but if they had, might have been a totally different story for them. And Kael'thas being the last hero of choice. So all tanking eyes will be on that Anubarak. So we might actually have to see a Locust Swarm being put out for him. Otherwise, he could just yeah. get completely blown up before the fight even begins. Yeah, it's going to be rough. To, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how these fights end up playing out for NMD. I mean, we have a very... Uh, cohesive lineup on the side of Dark Side, and a very obvious and very straightforward um, how they want to play. They just want to just stack up, get the double Illidan going, and just let him go to town. Whereas on the side of uh, NMD, it's a little bit less clear, especially with that Zul in the lineup trying to just. Those specialists can sometimes make drafts a little bit weird. No, I, th I think I get it. So, okay, on the side of Dark Side, it's going to be Push City. On the side of NMD, they have Push City, but they also have quite a nice team fight. And even if Anubarak goes Cocoon, because of the way Abatha works, pre-10, it would almost be like, if they could get 10 first, it would be like a 3v5 almost, because Abatha can't join the fights, and you can Cocoon a target out, so there's just three members of Dark Side that they'd have to deal with, and no Ming to get rid of the Cocoon. Yeah, they don't have the really effective tools to deal with the cocoon in that lineup. So, very just doing some theory crafting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's <laughs> a lot of what we're doing here with some of these picks and some of these compositions. As we are getting into game three, it is currently one-one, and NMD are really looking like they want to cause an upset, and they are on the blue. We have Hiccup on the Zul, we have Penta on Anubarak, Ninja is on the Kalthas, Lahal is again on the Malfurion, and Physics is on the Falstad. And on the red side this time, we have Team Dark Sided with Haki on Illidan, Sashin on ETC, Vicarek playing Arthas, Rhaegar, uh, sorry, Moves on Rhaegar. I don't know why we always do that for Moves. And Demise on Abatha. Moves must be really good at just role playing his characters or something. Yeah, I mean, he plays a lot of, a lot just, of Uther. He's played yeah. a lot of Uther. We just, it's like, Uther is Moves the at hero. this point. Yeah. <laughs> so at level one, we do have a little bit of posturing around this side point, but. The Illidan is actually on the bottom side of the map, so with the numbers advantage, it, the, the members of Dark Side, uh, even though they had the disadvantage, they were able to just move their way in and take that side point. Yeah, it's not about the vision point. I mean, we often joke that there's always going to be that ARAM where teams just slap up for it. It's not so important these days around. 
And also, interestingly enough, we have also seen Lahali opted for it last game around, did a lot of uh, work for them, but the scouting drone again being taken, meaning that they can safely check and make sure that Sashin isn't hiding in a bush or uh, or um, a Vicarac on that Arthas. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, especially when we start getting around these altar phases or the temples. Uh, that vision ends up becoming really, really important as we do have NMD rotating as a massive stack between mid and bot, just not allowing the dark side to get any really uh, any consistent defense uh, set up just yet. So Zul's push is very, very strong. He can effectively take over two lanes by himself. Just push them out, rotate on, push them out, rotate on. They're almost playing this one like Tomb of the Spider Queen, if you will. Yeah, and with our wave it's just allowing them to rotate so much quicker as we do have these temples coming up right now as we've got physics on the top side. He takes a lot of damage, does manage to barrel roll just out of that Howling Blast and if that had a land, that looked like it could have been a kill. Yeah, but he does get out with his life. It just means that they'll give a, uh, the top temple to Darkseid and instead maybe just go and see if they can trade, get this middle one under their wing for NMD. Yeah, it is a bit of a trade early on, but Darkseid looks like they want to... Well, Sashin is trying to get aggressive on the bottom as they do have a lot of damage going down onto the ETC. The healing is just not there yet. He takes a bit of towers from the, the t shots from the towers. Hacking does take down the Mount Fury, so it's just going to be a trade one for one so far as we are going to get a pause... And then I'll pause and a pause again as we do have Hacky DCing, and that is a very unfortunate space to be DCing. Oh, it is, but that's all right. They caught it up nice and easy so we can take stock of the situation. So it was a one for one trade with the support being traded for a tank. Uh, on the side, I guess Darkseid wins that one a little bit more favorably because it's their <laughs> lucky position getting yeah. pulled out by Penta. We can see the Merc ready to just knock Hacky out of there. Yeah, that that, is, that is does not look like it's going to be a fun position to come back to. I mean, he's probably Boy, going to cop that. And uh, yeah, with three members of NMD just bearing down on him. Not sure if he has much of a chance out of that one, but we'll just have to wait and see once we get back into it. But yeah, this is a good time to take stock of just how things have been going. We do have Demise on the Unibrak, or not the Unibrak, the Abatha on the bottom side now, just starting to get that push going as the rest of the members were on both sides were starting to move towards these t uh, temples. And with the Falstaff moving towards the middle uh, the middle lane and the middle temple, this is allowing Vicarac on the Arthas to really just take complete control of this top one. Hmm, in terms of builds that we're seeing the uh, heroes take, so I can see Demise is building into that Toxic Nest build, meaning that there will be mines for days, which will allow for vision, as well as really slow down the rotations coming out of NMD. And uh, Battered Assault being taken uh, up, by Illidan, so meaning that he's opted for that as opposed to Immolation, will really help him in the team fights. And that's really, I guess, when you're putting all your uh, eggs into the Illidan basket, that's kind of the ability of choice. Yeah, it is going to impact his wave clear just a little bit. He went, as you mentioned, that Immolation not being picked up is going to limit that a little bit. But as you mentioned, it is pretty much Enable an all-in on the fight. Illidan. Yeah, you, yeah. you pretty much all-in on the Illidan. You kind of need him to do as much as possible when it comes to these team fights. I mean, ooh, it's going to be interesting once we get to those big later game team fights as we... Uh, but no convection yeah. being taken up by Ninja. He is he's going for the tried and tested, the, safe, like, yeah. the safe route. So Mana Attic being taken up. And as well as the last one that I could see that was interesting was Hiccup going that Curse Strikes build. So with the rework to Zul, that's kind of the build of choice everyone's been saying. You can get so much done. You get a Skeletal Mages at 10 to really lock up heroes and just unleash the damage. Yeah, absolutely. And also against that Illidan, slowing down his attack speed, I think that I think that is a good reason to be picking up that Zul, mm -hmm. uh, just to limit the amount of damage potential that that Illidan can do. It's almost like the uh, the reason why you pick up the Arthas, Arthas is to slow down the uh, Illidan when he's just dashing around these fights. Very similar idea with Zul and those cursed strikes. Yeah, if you're reducing his attack speed, his passive can proc less often, meaning that Illidan can kind of be a sitting duck. <laughs> so it's yeah, all exactly. about shutting him down. Yeah, so we are getting uh, the Illidan back into the game very soon. We should be getting there very mm -hmm. shortly as Hacky's we are rejoining. getting the readies from both sides. Three, two, one, and now we have to see if Hacky is going to get blasted. Yep, yep. he did. Poor Hacky. <laughs> not too surprised. He was not in a good position. Yeah, that was just a little bit of a <laughs> unlucky moment there for Hacky. So that is going to be the middle temple going over to NMD, but the top one is still very much under complete control of Darkseid. 
Yep. So Darth said, I happily take out Ooh, the top ones. The as the Abathur goes in a little bit too far forward and cops it. <gasps> Demise getting taken out there. That will punish Dark Sided actually quite a lot more because they won't have that Abathur to soak for them now. So that Absolutely. will actually be a nice little chunk of experience loss and an experience. Oh, look at this double Ooh, gravity lapse in the middle lane on session. And onto the two members of Dark Sided. Just stuck a little bit too close together and just allowed that Kalthas to get maximum value in that situation. But as we look on the top side, Vikarak is going to be able to clean up that fort. So they are going to be able to trade around the map, but a little, there's some cracks forming in the side of Darkseid just now. And are happily now ahead in the experience game, and if they can reach that 10 first, as I said, it could be a very interesting fight that they can push on the side of Darkseid. Darkseid need to make up this experience and make it up fast. Yeah, and we are starting to see a lot of the mercenary camps being taken. That's one of the things that Illidan does do quite well. He does, I guess, jungle is one of the terms we could use to describe what it is. It's just clearing out those neutrals really efficiently and able to apply pressure all around the map. I mean, look at this, okay. So on this side, I'm just looking at the damage numbers now. On this side of um, Dark Sided, we can really see it's actually Abatha topping the damage charts, not even Illidan. So it's been a more of a PvE game <laughs> for Hacky so far. Yeah, well, the Abatha does essentially just get a lot of damage just incidentally with all of those mines as we do get an aggressive play onto Penta as he does manage to burn himself away but with all the members of Darkseid taking a lot of damage from that flame strike and those bombs really start to do a bit of work onto the side of Darkseid but they are going to be able to back away both sides just just going to calm down a little bit and it's just going to be trading back and forth for now. If NMD were able to finish off that fort, there would have been a nice chunk of experience uh, gained on the side of them, and I don't think they'll be done with that fort just yet. NMD now, though, looking to clear out this bottom lane, but on the side, Darkseid, they're happy to siege with their siege camp. Oh, nice gravity labs to interrupt that power slide coming in from the EGC, but it's going to force them away, as, as you mentioned. Darkseid are going to try to keep on pushing on this bottom side of the map. They want to at least take these towers to uh, get some EXP back in their favor, but with this very melee heavy composition, they can't really step up to the plate. That's really it. They lack that range damage. They don't have the poke. They're just all about the fight. And when you're hiding behind that front wall, there's only so much you can do with the wave click coming out from Ninja and Hiccup. Yeah, now that we do have this temple spawned, I guess this is a good position for, as we do get another pause, I believe it might be Hacky. It was actually Sashin this time <laughs> who is having the problem. Is Dark Side just having all of the internet issues, but... It's not a problem, that's just Australia in general. It's just Australia in general, really. <laughs> that's Australia in general. Doesn't look like the boys are boot camping this time, so it's starting to show they don't have that land cafe going for them. Instead, it's just their own internet. That's probably why they invested in one. If they <laughs> keep dropping out the poor guys. And once again, I mean, I don't know if it's just bad luck, but I'm seeing Hacky. He looks like he's going to get knocked <laughs> by the same camp again. Luckily, he's not being surrounded by the team members of NMD, but jeez. They sure know when to pick him, don't they? But let's oh, look yeah. at the talents again. Let's see if we can right. pick up any other changes going on. So nothing too out of the ordinary. I mean, Burn Flesh, I thought um, Ninja would build into more of a Living Bombs build by starting with Mana Attic, but he actually is still going that Flame Strike heavy build. Yeah, well, I guess with how very aggressive and all in this composition from Darkseid it is, you will more often than not see those members start to stack up and as you mentioned, the Burn Flash, it is going to get a lot of value in those situations as we do get back into the game. The game has been unpaused as it looks like the members of NMD are still moving in on the point as the Housewife does go in. As Ninja takes a lot of damage, he is going to fall, but does get a nice flame strike to do a lot of damage in return. But he is going to get his attack speed reduced by so much, he's not able to stick around in the fight. So it's just going to be a one for one, but a nice pick up there for uh, NMD, and they're going to be able to control this temple. I mean, thank goodness on the side of NMD that Ninja did not take convection. He's just like, suckers, and I have nothing else. Don't take convection because. It's high risk, but it's high reward. If you can finish it, all is well in the world. But I mean, you can easily hit tab and you know who to prioritize. Or Moops, with the help of Demise, manages to take down the far side in the mid lane. So nice little pick up there, but still a very nice uh, pick for NMD. Managed to take pretty much the rest of that temple. They do take the fort on the bottom side, but Sashan really wants to go forward. He does have the team starting to come to help him out as Penta is going to be the target as the heroics are there on both sides. Sashan wanting to move forward, wants to step up to the plate with a mosh pit. He does get the ancestral manages to keep himself just alive for a little bit. Demise taking a lot of damage, but that's just the copy. He's going to be okay as Haki is 
doing a lot of damage, but he just does not have the team around him anymore. Big Rack is only just now turning up to the party, but yeah, NMD really controlling that fight, and yeah, it's all in on the Illidan, but if you just take away everything around it, what can he do? I mean, also interestingly enough, Vikarak was not there for that fight when it did break out, so that was NMD as well. They were very aware of the position that uh, Darkseid were in, and they were happy to take that fight. As I said, with that cocoon, you can have the numbers game so far in your advantage solely because of Abatha. Yeah, now this is a really good position for NMD. They have... Well, they're still going for this boss. The members of Darkseid are coming in now. They're not able to get there just in time as there's going to be the boss over to NMD. They're going to be pushing on the bomb side of the map. They have to deal with that. This is just allowing uh, NMD to just push this experience lead just that little bit further. And they're looking... No, they're hungry to get that level 13 talent more and continue the snowball with that boss being taken up as well. Great call. That's what happens if... if from 10 onwards, if you lose a fight towards that bottom lane, it's going to be an insta-boss call. And that will buy you a lot of time to then rotate on take other objectives. So great, now that they have to deal with one side of the map, we can take out this top, top floor. We can either even invade their bruises. I mean, preferably bruises first if they did want to invade, but at least if they can get this fort down, once again, more experience. They can pick up 13. Yeah, and now we do have the next temples coming up. 13 is only just now about to be hit by NMD, so a good position for them to be in. We'll have to see how this composition from Dark Side ends up being played out. I mean, we don't have the hunt on the Illidan. I mean, with this composition going pretty much all in on him, I feel as, as though the Metamorphosis may be uh, deemed necessary, but it, it is going to limit their global impact, uh, looking at the compositions, but with the Abathur, that may just be enough to uh, sway the global in their favor. Sashin getting a couple of shots in on that bottom temple, but sent something might have been up when he didn't see the rest of the team members of NMD. Lahal oh, now. They're taking a lot of damage, Lahal. He does manage to use the uh, ice block and a nice twilight. Oh. All of the members of Darkseid do, does manage to walk himself away from it. Really nice turnaround there from uh, NMD as Hiccup is starting to slash away at Sashin, but he is going to be able to back away. Not much follow up there from NMD, but. Still, it looked like it was going to be a brilliant pick onto that very squishy support, but they turned that around brilliantly. Yep, Lahal played that one textbook perfect. Hiccup now, looking like he needs to run away with Vicarek trying to lock the Howling Blast onto him. He's still sticking around there. He's got no fear, his team's here to back him up. Oh, a lot of damage, or oh, a little bit of damage going out onto Vicarek, but he is going to be okay. Now they're trying to turn it around as they, they are. Just taking some damage as they're trying to move forward, just the melee nature of this composition from Darkseid is just getting punished as they try to walk in. I mean, they are, but look at this. Penta now, he's forced to burrow on out. They are forced to disengage as well. They have Physics up in that top lane who is locked up by dealing with that Bruiser camp. Yeah, they do end up taking that fort. They do take a little bit of damage in response to it, though. But still, NMD playing it very cautiously. They know that they... Uh, are able to play that siege game just th that little bit better and we we'll just have to wait and see, have to wait and see what Dark Side do. They are the ones who need to be making the plays right now. Yeah, it's very interesting that Haki has actually taken up Metamorphosis as opposed to the Hunt. So it's not all about the push for days. They're going to leave the pushing to Demise. Instead, he really is going to try be that solo carry. He really wants that extra survivability instead of having that global. Uh, yeah, we'll have to see if that Start to come back to buy them. I mean, they do have the Abatha to try and soak some of those lanes, but with physics on the uh, on the false side, that's going to be another tool to push back against that. And as we do get an engagement in the mid lane, as Hiccup does use the poison over, like, manages to hit across several members of Darkseid. Is now they're trying to go in onto Hacky as he's taking a lot of damage and he's going low. As a nice Twilight Dream manages to lock down several members of Darkseid, the Illidan falls and. How do Darkseid come back from this? The cocoon goes down onto Sasha, and, and that's a lot of the crack control as well. And now they're just losing members here. The uh, not metamorph metamorphosis, the ultimate evolution was used, but didn't really get too much value out of it. But still, again, a nice pickup for NMD. Just managed to tear apart this lineup of Darksided. NMD have all the tools at their disposal, and I mean, Physics was caught, one could argue, on the wrong side of that fight, but not really. He was really distracting Vicarac. Uh, in that back line, just making sure that they couldn't collapse further in. And really, Hacky just got popped in that fight. And with your main damage dealer gone, that was time for Darksider to fall back. NMD now have that talent to your advantage. They have 16. They, they can force a fight quite uh, convincingly now and probably win it. They have that on, at their advantage. So there's a lot that Darksider need to catch up on now. Yeah, but it even seems like 
uh, NMD don't even need to try and force these fights. They're the ones who are okay allowing the members of Darkseid to walk into them and then just punch them for those overextensions. Especially with the tools that they had, that silence, as we are saying in the draft, could really, really punish an Illidan and it is working out of them just brilliantly. It's very anti-dive what they've got as well. I mean, if you've got a bunch of melee people diving into you, you've got that poison Nova. Didn't even bother getting the Skirly Tool Warriors. You've got the Cocoon, you've got the Phoenix for zoning, Twy Dream, Mighty Guts. Like everything that they can use is to either disengage or just really control the tempo of the fight. Yeah, and so far it's just working out brilliantly. They have a two level lead on the side of NMD. They have that talent tier advantage. And with this temple coming up and Hiccup wants to start working towards boss, but pro they start to see the members of Darkseid are just poking around. So just a little bit too risky to try and make that play just yet. But this is going to allow NMD to just uh, completely control this bottom temple. And every chance Physics gets, he's pushing out a lane, putting the pressure on. I mean, if we look at how much uh, experience both, um, I guess, Globals have contributed, we've got Physics doing 15k, Demise on 13k, so he's even out XP contributing in Abatha. Oh, on the bottom side, they're getting a fight going as Hacky is going forward, but having to be very careful in how he approaches these fights. The Cocoon does get used, as does the Poison Nova. A lot of damage going down onto the members of Dark Side. Physics comes in from the side. Another Twilight Dream hitting so many members. The Ancestral does keep Hacky in this fight, but he's just trying to get anything happening, but Moops has taken a lot of damage and forced away. That's the support of Darkseid just having to retreat as the uh, the, the Twilight Ring, the Gus got used as Ninja is still managing to stick around as he does fall. Hacky managed to turn this fight in the favor of Darkseid. They're just, as all the tools from NMD have been expanded, do they have enough to stick around as Hacky, or oh, not Hacky, um, yeah, Hacky is just cleaning up the members of NMD. Moops does fall, but it's still the Illidan just completely dictating the pace of these fights, and he is going to maybe clean up Penta, but with that fort there, it won't be able to finish him off, but that was incredibly well done from Darkseid to turn that fight around. That was a great fight by Darksided, and they really initiated it while Physics was uh, still top. And the fact that Physics came so late into the fight, it meant that Hiccup was instantly taken out and that's the advantage that Darksided needed with that empowered illidan from the abathur as well as we can see it was just hacky on cleanup crew big boss Ooh, called a big boss attempt coming out from Darksider, but they just didn't have the members there as hacky is actually no. gonna fall he just drops to the amount of bugs just on the screen made to clean him up and with the members of nmd coming back a little bit too soon for their likings that is just going to be a cheeky kill over to them and it's going to stop the boss at least really overstay their welcome with that boss call by only having two members around. Oh, Ninja's back and this is not going to go well for Darksider. They're trying to stick around in these fights, they just don't have the members in position and they're trying to keep it going as Moops gets gusted away. That's the healing out of the fighters. He is they're going to be able to get there as they did manage to take down the Zul even though they he did drop the poison over but somehow even though they just lose the Illidan at the very start of that, the members of Darkseid to really turn this fight around. Penta is going to be the next one to fall. He just did not have the mana to get himself out of there. And it looks like Ninja is in a bad position. He can try and dish out as much damage as he can, but he just does not have enough to burst through members of Darkseid. And well, this is going from, I guess, all over the place to even more over the place. And Darkseid is starting to scrap their way in, back into this game. It's almost like a pendulum, isn't it? Every time one team seems to have the upper hand, the other team's coming right back, and this time they can very easily take the boss. This is what they needed now, with the respawn timers being long enough. They can also take out that bottom temple, and this is really what Darksided needed to start enabling them. A lot of what went wrong in that fight was Physics was going for... What they've been doing is that Physics has been flying as he's been gusting them into Lahal's Twilight Dream. I mean, that's been amazing. But what happened this time is that he used Gus to get moves away, and he overcommitted on Vicarac who still had Army of the Dead going on. And that was enough time to store for Moops to come in, Ancestral Heal him. Once you get that, the slow from Arthas, you can't do anything. Physics was then a sitting duck, and that's a lot of their damage gone. Yeah, and now, after what seemed like a really solid, uh, pretty much 15 minutes for NMD, they are now forced onto the defensive. They have to deal with this boss, and now they're going to have to deal with essentially two sets of mercenary camps pushing into this wave as well. And they do have the range wave clear to try and deal with it, but uh, if Darkseid just forced the fight, it's going to be really hard for them to deal with. As the Poison Nova actually gets dropped a little bit prematurely, doesn't actually hit anyone on the side of Darkseid. And they're just going to keep on pushing in the point. The Phoenix does have to get used as well, and they're trying to force away Darkseid, but they're just 
just bullying their way into the base of NMD. The flame strikes coming in and ringing true, but and actually the uh, I mean the dead does get popped. The keeper's not going to go go down just yet as. Uh, Session does get the power slide in onto the Anubarak who does get taken down immediately. The Cocoon does uh, get demolished as well and the nice Ancestral to keep alive Starship and keep him in this fight in a nice position and that keep does fall and with all of these uh, mercenaries just pushing with them, they're I mean, finally able to break their way into the base. Darkseid were pushing up with 20 and 20 was so close on the side of NMD but the fact that they lost a member before oh, they hit the 20. goes down, they're trying to take down Vicarac but they just don't have enough to finish him off. The army of the dead doing just so much work, <laughs> able to stick around and now with a lot of the tools down on the side of, well actually all of the tools down on the side of NMD, this is allowing Darkseid to just keep on moving forward. Hacky has so much more freedom as he just gets hit with the gravity lapse. Metamorphosis does keep him alive as he does end up spreading the living bomb to all of his teammates, unfortunately. And that is going to force him to retreat. It was a nice little dodge there using the metamorphosis, but he did drop a bomb on his own teammates. And that, a little bit unfortunate, but they do manage to force their way into the base of NMD and they are in a great position. Although Penta popped so early, it was still all right because all the damage deals, all they clear was still alive. As most importantly as well, their support, Lahal was still alive and could really back them up. But with these temples now up for grabs, we have to see NMD, they need to clean out their base and see if they can get any value here. I don't know if they can contest it though. It's yeah, dangerous because it, we it still have Mosh Pit online. It is very dangerous as if they stack up, as you mentioned, that Mosh Pit can completely turn any fight that uh, is thrown their way. It looks like they're just uh, Darkseid are playing it rather cautiously, wanted to back away, grab some of these mercenary cancers, deal with some of the wave pressure. They are the ones in uh, in favor when it comes to the structural advantage in this game, and we'll just have to wait and see how this next fight plays out. I mean, it's good that Darkseid are playing oh, yeah. it patiently, though, because I mean, like, uh, without they've already got the numbers disadvantage, as you sort of pointed out, but. By waiting, they can now force a more even fight. If they win in like that, Penta would just cocoon one, and then once again, it would just be like a very messy fight. But look it, at this. I'm excited. They realize that all Back of those, <laughs> yeah, they, they want to just completely subvert the map objective and just push in. This is forcing back Zul uh, to base to try and help out with the defense, but this is allowing Darkseid to, again, uh, dictate all the control on the bottom side of the map. It looks like they want to at least take this mercenary camp and we will have that uh, top temple finishing off the keep of dark side. So that is going to be an open wave with mercenary camps pushing in that uh, is going to have to be dealt with for dark side. But ooh, it's very real. It was a going to be. It was always going to be a tough situation to try and work their way into for dark side. But do you think they may have given up a little bit too much just to try and get control on the bottom side of the map? I don't know. I mean, it's both teams now have an open entry into the core. So it's going to be down to this next team fight. They can just then run and end. So really, both teams, they don't want to throw it. They want to make sure that they take a fight on their conditions, on their terms. So they didn't even try to do that back door. They were just so happy pushing it up. They couldn't get any value in that top lane. They were just out of position. They would just be fighting into NMD's, uh, I guess, trap, if you will. So Darkseid, they decided to try and seek value elsewhere. Now they're doing the camping, the bush camp technology. Uh, Cheeky technique. bush camp, the Chinese bush traps. <laughs> that they want to try and pick out the members of uh, NMD in rotation. We do have Hacky revealing himself, but we <laughs> we got pings coming down as, oh, lovely. Moonfire there from Lahal reveals Sasha in the bush and they knew what was coming up and uh, they are not going to get caught out by those cheeky plays and as you mentioned, it's a very patient game right now. It is 1-1 one, one in this series. The winner of this game goes through to the upper bracket finals. The loser drops into the lower bracket and that can be a bit of a rough situation where down there it's all best of ones. Boss is up now. I mean, mine has been popped by Penta so Darkseid know exactly where enemy are. They're in a reasonable position, they do get uh -oh. the hit down onto the Malfurion. The power slide goes out of the fight, they did not want to overcommit and end up getting punished by a Twilight Dream, but now that we have the positioning on top by a Dark Side, it is, they had the better position to try and work their way towards the temples, but ooh, very, very cautious on both sides, not wanting to overextend, not wanting to get caught out as that ultimate evolution is going to end up getting taken out. That's one tool out of the way as a nice power charge does manage to knock up two, him. but he's actually just going to go in again using the rewind and Sarsen is going to be forced to power slide away. Uh, 
shots going in thanks to Hacky controlling this middle temple, but it's it's getting real, real tight here. <laughs> it really oh, is. the cocoon does get used onto the uh, Illidan, but they're just not able to get anywhere in this fight. As, uh, the uh, Penta does take a little bit of damage, just having to borrow charge away, and that's one of the massive team fight tools out of this fight. As they are going to have to use, I believe, the guts very soon. They did manage to get the lockdown onto Lahal. He does use the Twilight Dream, but none of the members have gone down as yet. The, the Gus is very good to move to disengage, but Ray, oh, the Rego is the first one to fall. Both supports out of this fight. Are so much damage coming out of the NMD lineup, and the members of Darkseid are just having to retreat, and this could be the end. They are just scattered to the wind as NMD has just turned this fight around. The Forsyth does fall, but with only Sasha and like just only the tanks available to them, and and the uh, Abatha, there's just not much that they can do. They try to get the fight around, but this could just be the end, and NMD could take this series. NMD can happily take this series. With Falstad down, that does pose a bit of an interesting issue at hand. They have two members down. The fight was so restrained on both teams. Like, it was really nice to watch. And a lot of the time, I mean, Lahal, you could have argued he was just waiting for the perfect time to ice block and the perfect time to hydrate. He wasn't getting baited out. A lot of the time, if you get collapsed upon his uh, Malfurion, you can sort of panic and just hit the Twilight Dream. He wasn't getting baited out. It looks like they'll opt for the safer. They'll take the temples instead. Instead yeah. of trying to... I think that's the safer play. I don't think they could have ended. Not with Bikarak up. I mean, trying to just... Go for the end without your foul set would have been quite tricky on the side of NMD, but they got the next best, next next best thing. Getting a tongue twister here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, as yeah, as that false did go down, it did put a damper on those ambitions of ending the game early. But with all those temples being taken, that's a lot of damage down onto the core, which has dropped down to about fifty percent. And I believe I'll, with the rest of these shots, the cocoon does get used onto moves, and they have to try and get onto this uh, this. Temple is, it is actually going to be the last few shots going onto the core of Dark Side. That could just very well be it. The, just 2% left, and Physics just walks in and finishes off the game, and that is going to be the game, the series, and NMD. They From behind. They into the loser's bracket. So well played by both teams. Incredible game. So much restraint towards the later stages of the game, and NMD, they really understood what they needed to do at the end there, and they just pulled it together, went for the win, Oh, what a game. I mean, we analyzed it as we were going. And I think a lot of how, what went right for them was just knowing who to prioritize. So every time their key targets were being dove upon, they were able to pull back focus and just blow up the crucial target. So they blew up moves in that last fight. There was no healing then for Haki. Yes, he had the Abatha, but their main support was down. There was no ancestral heal coming out for him. So the prioritization of their targets, as well as just knowing how and when to rotate, as well as that last fight there where they made sure that they even sacrificed themselves to the temple. They said, all right, physics, you go and finish it off. Like, great stuff. Absolutely. And, well, they brought in Lahal into the lineup and NMD. They are looking like an absolute dominant team. And now is the time where we start talking about MVPs. And looking at the two games that we did get to see, I'm looking at Ninja. I mean, he was on the Lunara in the first game, was pumping out a lot of damage there. Even in those losing fights and in that game, the Kel Thars, you got to admit, so much damage was coming out of that fire mage. I really liked what Ninja was doing, but I think my eyes were on one specific hero, the Lost Vikings on Towers of Doom. 45k experience contribution, was it? Or was it 40k? It was, I, I, it was about 40k. 40, uh, 40,000k. Yeah, yeah. It, it was an, an astonishing number. It, uh, I've got to give it to Physics. He did it around this time. He didn't have the Vikings, but he still did it this time as Falstad. Really... I guess negating a lot of what Demise, the pressure that Demise was trying to put on the map. So he did it back to back. But I think that for that Vikings, he's got to get my MVP vote. So I'll leave it with you. Oh, fair enough. I mean, Physics also doing a very serviceable job on the far side. We saw those very uh, high impact gusts into the Twilight Dream. And mm, great those combos. Were incredible com uh, combinations there from the NMD. So I believe we are going to go with Physics as the MVP for this series. So well done to you. And well done to the rest of NMD taking a series kind of against expectations. But uh, we are going to be going to a short break as we get into our next series of the day. So don't go too far away. We'll be right back. <laughs> 